Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Bobby Escher. He runs for the Rand Cortland Track Club, and he is the vice president of the Rand Cortland Track Club. I first met Bobby back in 2014 during the Memorial Day weekend. Although he was injured, he came to support his teammates at Memorial Grove for the 450 for the Fallen called at that time. Today it's called 500 for the Fallen. He cheered on his team. Moreover, he got on the train and he met me at Columbus Circle and we both greeted the Bronx contingent. I'm honored to have Bobby as my guest. Thank you, Will, and uh, I'm honored to be on here, uh, joining the club of uh, the fine members of Van Cortlandt Track Club and other track clubs who have come before me. Tell us where you were born, a little bit about your childhood. I was born in Scarsdale, New York, uh, just a little north of, uh, of the city. Uh, I'd say one of the stories that I'd really like to start out with, uh, uh, being that this is uh, a running show. Uh, when I was in third grade, there was a parent-teacher conference uh, where, unfortunately, I wasn't there to witness it, but uh, the gym teacher said that for uh, the safety of everyone in the class, as well as me, uh, uh -huh. that it might not be a bad idea for me to sit out the rest of the semester of gym class. Really? My coordination was horrible. I was about the worst athlete you could possibly imagine, and uh, she... Turned out to be wrong in the long run, but uh, at the time, I definitely would have been very close to agreeing with her. Okay. And, uh, Ooh, what happened after that? Well, after that, honestly, uh, uh, first of all, I just grew up. Uh, second, uh, uh, it started to become more of a more of a fad, I guess, to have races, uh, especially for elementary school. Uh, and when I was in fourth grade, I actually was able to enter one that we had the, uh, at the school, uh, and it took place of one of the mile fitness tests, mm -hmm. and it was probably something like three quarters of a mile or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I had dreams leading up to it of, of winning the race and all the good stuff the kids have. And I promptly got second to last in it. Second to last. Uh, second okay. to last. But it's one of the fondest memories I have. It was the first real race that uh -huh, I ever did. Uh -huh. And after that, I was hooked. Hmm. Was your family there to, to cheer you on? What made it special? Uh, yeah, they, they were there. Uh, I was being paced by uh, one of my friends uh, who... Uh, kindly got last place, uh, and <laughs> oh, his brother, a good friend. Uh, very good friend. Uh, actually, I should, on a side note, just put in that uh, both of us ended up being uh, co-captains of the track team. Uh, uh, in high school? In, in high school. Which high school was that? Uh, that was Edgemont High School. And I continued to do that race every year, mm -hmm. and then when I was in sixth grade, uh, I had to do a little uh, article blurb for the yearbook, and I said, my plans in junior high school are going to be to, first of all, join the cross-country team, and uh, my parents, when they read it, uh, were shocked out of the water. They had no idea what I was talking about, and they had no idea that I was even on my radar, oh, okay. and I guess I didn't either until I actually wrote that. Okay. Uh, I just realized that I loved that feeling competition, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't... I knew I probably wasn't going to win anything. I just wanted to be on a sports team. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I actually got there, uh, it was the same deal pretty much as in elementary school. I was getting second to last in some of the races. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think I ever got last place, but I definitely was very close. Okay. Uh, it really was some time around ninth grade that I actually started being not the last place person on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just sort of was a combination of maturity and just not giving up that I ended up being a decent runner by, by senior year. Senior year of high school? Senior year of high school, yeah. Cool. But, but Bobby, you were telling me in one of the emails that you were diagnosed with attention deficit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's just say that school didn't come easy for me. I'll put okay. it that way. Well, uh, tell us, what is AD? ADHD. Basically, I had a lot of... I couldn't pay attention in class when I was young, 
uh, like in elementary school, uh, when I was in first grade, uh, there were just numerous notes coming home to my parents saying Bobby doesn't sit still and calls out in class and a mm -hmm. lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that probably also contributed uh, from the research I've done on it, uh, it probably also contributed to my lack of coordination on the basketball court. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, uh, not really hearing things correctly, uh, such as uh, when my dad was the coach of my first basketball team, he, uh, he, he said, uh, make sure that you do not uh, let that ball out of your sight and uh, guard anyone who's got right, the ball. Right, right. Uh, naturally, I took that as guard anyone who has the ball, even if they're on my team. <laughs> oh, so cool. that uh, Is it uh, hereditary? Did you, does it once in a family? Or you have that to be I'm the lucky not one. really sure. That I'm not really sure. So I guess you had to take medication? Foods, yeah, a little bit, was, yeah. How did they treat it? There was some medication for it. As I matured, though, uh, it gradually started to, to not be as large a... Uh, is large an issue. Mm -hmm. Is this something you will always have? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, even today, I mean, just every now and then, there, there'll be like, uh, someone will be like, Bobby, uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, you mean Sorry. birth to Bobby kind of thing? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Well, uh, that's, uh, that could be normal. A lot of people do that. Yeah. When you told me about that, I did a little research, mm -hmm. and I was fascinated to support groups all over the place. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I read it was an interesting discussion, the advantages of having <laughs> attention deficit disorder. David Nealman, the JetBlue CEO, or no, former they, CEO? Oh, he had it? Yes. Well, they said people with attention deficit uh, disorder exhibit creativity, problem-solving skills. Sometimes they're very hyper-focused in, in terms of if there's something that you really, really like, that mm -hmm. you, you can really laser focus on it to master it? Well, that certainly may explain the 100-mile uh, weeks for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you'd like to run 100 miles a week. Oh, yeah. So it's not at the end of the world to, to have attention deficit. They, they know how to treat it. It's something that uh, basically you just need to find your niche. You need to find your niche and uh, just if you can harness it over time, you'll still be just as successful as anyone else. I mean, that's right. it. You're the poster child for that. I mean, like I said, there are CEOs who've got it. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. It's, not a, it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a manageable. It only is it manageable, but it, yes, it can be an advantage in certain yeah. ways. Okay, well, it sounds and like you took so, advantage of it. I think you said you created yourself a problem solver when you're at, <laughs> oh, anyway, we'll, go, we'll go into yeah. that. Were you able to go into college at some point? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was uh, uh, SUNY Plattsburgh. Uh, I ended up choosing that because uh, it wasn't too big a school. It's mid-sized. Yeah. I mean, we're not yeah. talking Michigan or Michigan State with okay. whatever, 35, 40,000 people, or, uh, or NYU, okay. where I got my master's from. That's up now to like 55,000 people wow. when you combine all the different programs they've what got. What did you study in college? I actually studied... Uh, uh, hotel, restaurant, tourism management. The longest major in there. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, uh, growing up, actually, my, my passion wasn't running. My passion was actually cooking. Oh. Uh, I actually, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it was my dream to open a restaurant at some point. Uh, then I worked in a few professional kitchens and uh, after I decided, college? yeah, at, well, after college and, and during college, uh -huh. uh, just during the summers. So we're getting yourself. Yep. Oh, were you athletically inclined during college? Did you run? Oh, yeah. That was really where I started. That was where I really started to blossom as well. Oh, okay. So in college, somehow you got faster and faster. I had a coach. His name's Eric Blake, actually. He's a, a U.S. mountain running champion, and he, he really was the first one who took me up to a different level. Uh, it was, I had been doing, I don't know, maybe 35 miles a week in high school, and uh, the first week... Uh, the first week of of college, he said, okay, I think 60 miles will be good for you for this week. I'm like, oh, what? Big jump. 60 miles. And then I started doing 90 miles a week and uh, cracked 100 by the end of that year. And that ended up just being... Uh, 
I, I'd say that that was as big a part of my life in college as anything. Okay, so running and cooking became your passions in college. Well, actually, cooking was my passion up until college, and it still was through it, but running really became okay. my big, big passion okay. in college. Then it wasn't until I moved back to New York that I, I started coaching uh, 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 at my old high school, uh, the seventh, Edgemont, yeah, right. uh, seventh, seventh and eighth grade. Uh, where I started, and I ended up getting hooked on that too. Uh, that coaching. Just, yeah. That coaching and running are my two biggest passions. Uh, now, yeah. how did you get hooked up with the Van Cortland Track Club? I was looking around and trying to decide what club to join because I wanted to join another club. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that to David King uh, during a work day, and he's like, Van Cortland. Of course. What, what, what kind of what kind of question are you asking yourself, Van Cortland? As soon as he said that, I I looked at him like, you're absolutely right. What year was that that he joined? It was 2011. Not that long ago, four years. Uh, four years. Yeah, it seems like a lot longer than I've been a member of it. At that point, have you run your first marathon? I think I had done five marathons before until you that joined. Point. Yeah. Well, tell us about your first. Everybody remembers their oh, first. Oh man, my first marathon. Uh, Walt Disney World. Uh, 2008, uh, oh man, I made every mistake in the book. Uh, that's not a one to pick was, for PR, that's the one to have fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, well, I, I was coming off a college career that pretty much was all about giving it absolutely everything in every race, which is pretty much how I race now, but... It was, I, I was at a pretty high level in college. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, I won my conference championship in the 10K uh, and had to race that tactically. And I really was, I was shooting for, uh, I was shooting for under 230 for my first marathon. Oh. I mean, based on everything that wow. I had done in college, uh -huh. that was actually being conservative. <laughs> I mean, I had, I had been going for low 15s in the 5K uh -huh. and uh, just under 31 minutes in the 10K. Well, what was your half marathon? I had not done a half a marathon, marathon, believe it or not. Okay. I had not. So I go went, into a marathon. I went right into the marathon. Okay, that was, what happened? <laughs> what didn't happen? Um, was it hot? I, it was, well, I had been training in uh, around an average of 10 degrees uh, every, every day up in Plattsburgh. And the morning of the race, it was 60 degrees and humid. Forget about the 230. I went, uh, let's just finish. No, I went out a little conservative, mm -hmm. went out 117 for the half marathon uh, and was feeling pretty good. Uh, then right around 16 miles, I started to cramp up a little bit and figured just relax, take in some more fluids and all that, and that didn't work. Uh, then, then actually, uh, mile 18, it was, uh, it, it was really good because I didn't realize that uh, what they were giving out uh, was not just a wet sponge, but it actually had some kind of soap on it. So uh, getting Ooh, that wow. in my mouth really wasn't very pleasant when I was already starting to hurt. <laughs> uh, then uh, mile 20, that basically it was just about finishing. Uh, I ended up running about 250. It was a very, very humbling experience. It was also very hot. You know, you lose a lot in that. And you know, uh, thinking back to it, it really, it was a very good first marathon. It, absolutely. Uh, it was a very good first but marathon. But at the time, you were slightly disappointed or more than slightly? Uh, yeah. I was really embarrassed, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, went, I went home. But most people and, would have said, what a great job. They oh, must everyone have said else that. was. Pretty much everyone around me uh, was actually starting to get very annoyed with me because I was so oh, disappointed. They said, snap out of it. <laughs> yeah. So I was getting ready to go back up to Plattsburgh, and I just realized I got to run the Boston Marathon. I'm like, I qualified. Who knows what's going to happen after college? Uh, I didn't know if I was going to end up not being able to run after college. I didn't know what I was going to be doing professionally, right, right, right. so I just... Well, that 250 definitely qualified you for Boston. Oh, yeah, it, it qualified, and actually, I mean, back then, it was, uh, I mean, if you qualified, you were in. Now, you qualify, and you're on a waiting list. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's crazy to think how easy it was. I mean, I was able to register in uh, uh, February, and it was... I don't think it closed until like 
a month before. So how did you do in Boston? That year actually was really fun uh, because that was the year that Lance Armstrong did it. I uh, got right behind where all the elites were because I wanted to see all that, just get the full experience. And that was the last time I saw Lance Armstrong in that race because I ended up being in by eight minutes exactly. I did 2.43, yeah. Okay, now are you happy with this? Yes, oh, okay. I was very happy with that. I was Plus much happier Lance, with that. That helped too. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that, that just sort of put it in perspective. All right, and, all right. And, uh, yeah. You can beat a world record holder, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Go back to Van Cortland. You're, yep. You've already got four or five marathons under your belt. You're joining mm -hmm. the team. So what is it about Van Cortland, not that you, you were there, you know, what really makes you proud to be a member? I mean, what does make me proud? I mean, honestly, uh, it's it's just to me, it's the most inspirational club in New York City. Uh, it's it's got, I mean, there really isn't anything that we don't have. Uh, we've got everybody from the the local competitive corral runners uh, to uh, to sub elite runners to elite master, masters runners. I mean, we've got people who are running close to 90% age grade, which is considered world-class. Wow, that's right. I mean, we've got Kevin Shelton Smith, who's running uh, 454, I think it was, last year for the Fifth Avenue Mile. Wow. He's 55. An uh, incredible time. And we've got Laura Rodriguez, who ran uh, 255 and change at, uh, at the Boston Marathon this year. Uh, but then we've got runners who have the courage to start, who have the courage to come out here, join a club, say, okay, my goal is to run a marathon for this relative who died of cancer last oh, okay, year. Okay. My goal is to lose 50 pounds and run a marathon after that. My goal is to uh, just be a part of a running group. Never, ne never been a member of, of a, a running club I really want to, I want to get this experience, and we welcome all of it, and we foster all of it. And that's really what sets us apart from a lot of other running clubs. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I mean, the, I, I respect every running club in New York City, mm -hmm. but most of the time you see, you see a line down the middle where you've got the competitive runners over here, you've got the beginners and everyone else over here. Mm -hmm. And that's just not the case in Van Cortland. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it that is really awesome is that our home is Van Cortland Park. I mean, Van Cortland Park <laughs> really park. is, well, it's it's got every piece of running history that you can think of. I mean, everyone has run there. Yep, yep. I mean, everybody who has been to the Olympics pretty much Started by running in Frank Cortland. Shorter, I remember. Frank Shorter, Steve Prefontaine, uh, uh, Pete McCardle is someone uh, who you don't hear a lot about, but he still holds the course record for uh, the college AK course in there. Wow. Uh, I think it was something like 23, 20 or mm -hmm. something, which no one has even come close AK. to. AK, don't usually run an AK, but. Five miles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, we. We train there, and it's it's just yeah the 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 the, the whole package. Yeah, I know, I know. I've had a, a few of your members. I'm very very impressed with Van Cortland Track Club, and indeed, besides all that, you also give back to the community. You you do yeah you give back in terms of rehabilitating the, the trails, rehabilitating the trails. Uh, and this year, actually, we have our, our summer 5K series uh, that's every other, uh, every other Thursday night. We are actually using every single race this year to uh, run for a cause. Uh, I believe the next one is going to be for suicide prevention. Uh, we had uh, the last one was for Moms in Training, which is associated with uh, Team for Training. Yep, yep. Uh, the same. Mandy sa Sussman, yep. Betty Clark are the. Yep. Okay, ladies, are we ready to run? Yes. Yeah. Team captains. Yeah, Mandy and Betty, uh, they, they've been doing great things with that program. And you also get involved the local kids, too. Yes, uh, we're starting to do a lot more kids' races. Uh, 
uh, in September, we're planning to have a, uh, a 10K, uh, and we're going to be having a youth race uh, for that as well. They uh, run so a little less, maybe a, a, a Yeah, they're going to be doing a mile. A one mile. Yeah, They'll okay, be cool. doing a mile. mile yeah. uh, and we're going to be working with Friends of, uh, Friends of Van Cortland Park. Uh, uh, they're to a be great organization. Fantastic organization. Now, yeah. when, you, when you organize your own races in Van Cortland, are they timed, or how do you do the timing? Yes. Yep. Uh, we, we've got them timed. Uh, we just got a new timing system, actually. So, so you have your uh, own timing? Yes. Okay. We time those. Uh, the, kids, uh, the kids' runs, though, we are debating whether or not to make those just fun runs or to time it and do all that stuff. Yeah. So That's an interesting question. I, maybe you want to make it fun for them and not so competitive. My thought, too. I, I, I want to just, I, I don't want to intimidate anyone with yeah, that. Yeah. I just think back to how I was at that age. And well, well, you know, the, the fun part about that, um, um, I've had other guests who work with kids. A great one is One for Fun by mm -hmm. Nicoletta yep. Arangas. Yep. And she's super good with kids, so she would have a lot of insight that she can share. She's in, I think she's in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And she can come over and sing the national anthem. Uh, you probably have your own singers, but uh, she's a super Actually, good. we haven't had that in a while, so that, that would be awesome. Yeah, That'd she, be really awesome, uh, she's actually. She's really good at it. All right, she'll get everybody pumped up. But listen, we're almost out of time. I know you just got elected to be vice president of the board. <laughs> so tell us, what is the board of the Van Cortland Track Club? What are their responsibilities? We ponder the direction that the club is going in and make sure that we're staying on track with our mission and including everybody and engaging the community on every level possible. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it, it, it's tough to sum up in, uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, well, community involvement is very important. Yeah, we established a, a, a mission statement uh, not too long ago, so that everyone knows exactly what we stand for. Uh, we uh, discuss what activities we should possibly have during the year when when we start out. Including socials, because I think you guys oh, did yeah, something yeah. going to Yankee Stadium or something. Oh, yeah. Well, that's our social committee that, that works on that. Uh, Marianne Kinda is in charge of that for the most part. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, we have... we. We have a lot of stuff besides running. We're going to Yankees games. Uh, more than once a week, you'll be able to find us at Bronx Ale House <laughs> after our workouts, our tempos, our Tuesday night workouts, or uh, our after our Saturday runs. We're always at Short Stop Coffee Shop right across from one of my favorites. The, yeah, I was there. Awesome. Yep, a couple of times. And you also, in a, for the past two years, you guys have been very supportive of supporting the, the relay for the fallen. Yes. So uh, thank you very much for that. that You're very welcome. Been, that's great. So that's you, a no-brainer for us. We I mean, get together in a committee and said, yes, we're going to do it. Oh yeah. Support it. That, send that we, money. Send people. Yeah. I mean, that that we just we sit around at the board meeting and uh, and say, okay, so the 500 for the fallen. Yep. Yeah, we're doing it. It's, it's really that simple. <laughs> well, that's great. So. Great. Well, that's interesting. We want to encourage more clubs to do that. And then finally, what are some of your personal challenges in terms of athletically? Do you have a destination run for yourself? I, I would really like to break 2.30 for the marathon. Oh, uh, you're back to that 2.30 again. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, oh, that's an ever that's So an ever what's your ending. PR at this point? 2.38. 2.38. That's my, yeah, uh, my, my half marathon uh, indicates a lot better. Uh, what's your half? Well, the PR is from a while back. It was 109.50. Oh, my God. What, less than 110. Yeah, you got a 230 that, in you. Have you done so, Chicago yet? I haven't done Chicago well, yet. That's a good one for, you know, to try to break that. Well, I'm either, I'm either doing New York or Philly this year. Uh, that's, that's, a tough, that's a tough to do PRs on. I don't know about Philly. Uh, but New York Philly's is, pretty good. Philly's okay. pretty good, but I also love hills. That's you the do. thing. I love hills. All well, my right. fa my fastest not to not to brag too much, but my fastest miles at Boston this year were the Heartbreak Hills. Really? Yeah, five forty eight average. Really, the really red, psychologically yeah. prepared for the, the deficit you have. Remember, they did hyper focus. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that maybe that one of the benefits for you. Exactly. Well, listen, exactly. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Will. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.